All right, let's talk about fork bombs, one of the most classic commands for trolling your friends on Linux. You've probably seen this command before, or you heard it talked about, maybe even convinced somebody to use it in a crash through system, or maybe somebody convinced you to use it in a crash through system, or perhaps maybe you just came across a meme like this and you're like, huh, what is that? So if you haven't gathered by now, typing this command into your terminal will crash your system. Not always, there is ways to prevent it, but for the most part, if you haven't taken any precautions against this, it will crash your system. And don't worry, we're gonna demonstrate all of this and we'll be crashing my system several times by the end of this video. So first, where exactly did it get its name? It gets its name from the fact that it leverages a Linux feature called forking, which creates a copy of a process, as well as gives it new resources that it can use. And a fork bomb is essentially a script that will create infinite amounts of copies of that program in an exponentially increasing manner. A fork bomb will eventually exhaust all the resources of a computer and that will result in it crashing. So how exactly does this little bit of text, just maybe what, 10 characters, do all that damage? Well, let's find out. Part of what causes a lot of confusion right off the bat here is people don't realize that a colon is a valid function name. So if we just take all four of these colons and replace it with something like fork me, and then slightly reformat it here so it looks a little easier to read, Proper spacing. Now here's our new fork bomb. So line by line, what's going on here? So on line three, this is the actual creation of a function. And inside the curly braces is the actual function. The body of the function fork me is a recursive call to fork me, where it also pipes the output into fork me again. And then the ampersand means that it runs this entire pipeline in the background. And it's the pipe, it's the pipe character itself is what's actually causing the fork. And then finally on line seven, this is what actually just kicks off the entire fork bomb. This is the initial call to fork me. So basically every time it recursively calls itself, it starts exponentially more PIDs. Two the first time around, then four, then eight, then 16, and so on. And this all happens basically in an instant. So let's do a few demonstrations and start crashing actual systems. So on the left-hand side here, this is a VM that I made. This is just running top, and it's running top-d.1. So we get updates on top every tenth of a second, and then I'm just sorting on the, the PID. So you can actually see PIDs with descending numbers. This, this will mean every PID we start will appear at the top, and that'll be useful to visualize what's actually occurring. And then the right side is just a second terminal that lets us actually do the fork bomb. So first, let's just drop a fork bomb in here and just, just run it and see what happens. So you'll notice as soon as I press it, we're going to instantly see tons of bash commands here. The tasks goes up to about 484. The load average goes up a lot, and it's, it's already crashed. Okay, so I've restarted my system and got the VM running again. The next thing I want to demonstrate is a fork bomb that actually has a sleep in front of it. And what this will do is this will allow us to gradually let the fork bomb run without it just, just instantly eating everything up. So I'm just going to add a, add a sleep two here. And pay close attention to the tasks, which is at 100 now, and pay close attention to the commands and the PIDs. And you'll notice that they're going to go up exponentially. So we'll start it. We got 101 tasks, 104, 108. You can see it's exponentially doing it now. 116, 132, 164, 228, 356, 612, 739, 11, 24, 1208, 17. And you can see it just, even with the delay, it's getting out of control. So at this point, it's created 2,432 tasks and it's, is, it's now crashed. Next thing I want to demonstrate is the difference between the fork bomb and just what would be infinite recursion. So if I take the fork bomb string and I get rid of the pipeline part and I run it, what's actually occurring here is it, it's kind of an infinite loop, it's secondly infinite recursion, and it'll go until it hits the max stack size, but it is just consuming 100% CPU on one PID. So this is not creating out of control PIDs like a fork bomb would. Last thing I want to demonstrate, which is kind of a little bonus thing, is how to stop fork bombs from crashing a system. So root accounts can use as many resources as they please, and so if you drop a fork bomb in a root shell, it's going to crash the system. Unprivileged accounts, however, can have resource limits, 
One such limit that can be placed on a non-privileged account is max user processes. And in the shell, we can use ulimit-u to see what that limit is. So right now, the max user processes for this particular shell is 6,957. However, we can specify a custom number. So let's just say 16. And now we do ulimit-u again, we can see that the maximum is set to 16. So now, let's put a fork bomb in here and see what happens. Note on the left-hand side here, there's 102 tasks running. When I press enter, you can see that the number only goes up to 117. It's basically one for bash that's currently running in, and then 15 additional processes that are being created via the fork bomb. And then I was just able to control C out of it, and then it fell from 117 back down to 102. And that's it for the video. Hopefully now you understand what a fork bomb is and what the mechanics of it are, and then some ways to make it have less of an effect on your system. If you have any questions or comments about anything you saw in this video, be sure to let me know below in the comments. As always, thanks a lot for watching. Hope to catch you on a future video. Take care.